Marymount Press, Wikipedia article audio. Marymount Press was a printing press in Boston, Massachusetts, founded by Daniel Berkeley Updike in 1893. He was committed to creating books of superior quality and believed that books could be simply designed, yet beautiful. Upon his death in 1941, the press was taken over by his partner John Bianchi, but ceased operations in 1949. Updike and his Marymount Press left a lasting impression on the printing industry, and today Updike is considered one of the most distinguished printers of the 20th century. Stanley Morrison, the typographer responsible for creating the ubiquitous Times New Roman, had this to say of the Marymount Press after Updike's passing, the essential qualities of the work of the Marymount Press, may be said without exaggeration, to have reached a higher degree of quality and consistency than that of any other printing house of its size, and period of operation, in America or Europe. History Typefaces used by Marymount Press Notable works Altar Book Vexilla Regis Quotidi The Humanist's Library Book of Common Prayer Edith Warden Limited Editions Club Artists Employed by Marymount Press Bertram Grosvenor Goodhue Thomas Maitland Cleland William Addison Dwiggins Rudolf Ruzicka Locations of Collections Boston Athenaeum Huntington Library Providence Public Library In 1892, after twelve years at Houghton Mifflin and its Riverside Press, Daniel Berkeley Updike was approached to design a new standard version of the Episcopal Church's Book of Common Prayer. The following year, work began on what would become known as the Altar Book, to be funded by Harold Brown. The commencement of Marymount Press followed. As Updike described the press's establishment, in no exact sense was the press ever founded it only began. Updike derived the name Marymount from Nathaniel Hawthorne's short story The Maypole of Marymount. The story centers on Thomas Morton's 17th century settlement in present-day Quincy, Massachusetts. Morton's estate was apparently the site of sports, music, and frivolity set up in the face of his puritanical neighbors. According to Updike, the press took its name from the fancy that one could work hard and have a good time. The style of the press developed quickly in its early years, at first imitating William Morris's style and the arts and crafts movement. But where Morris's work was decorative and heavy, Updike's design soon became clean and practical. By the end of the 19th century Updike had done away with designs inspired by Morris's Gothic revival. Instead, Marymount Press became known for its readable type and minimal decoration. This practicality could also be seen in the kinds of jobs that Updike took on, and which ultimately sustained the business. Book plates, advertisements, concert programs, catalogues, greeting cards, periodicals, government tracts, diplomas, and more made up the bulk of the work done at Marymount. From 1915, Updike ran the press with John Bianchi, who had been a foreman in the workroom since Marymount's early days. Bianchi shared many of Updike's same values and objectives and was therefore made partner in 1915. Every single item produced by Marymount was supervised by either Updike or Bianchi. After Updike's death in 1941, Bianchi carried on the work of the press with his son Daniel Berkeley Bianchi, 
but business dwindled and Marymount Press ceased operations in 1949. Over the course of 56 years of operation, the Marymount Press printed more than 20,000 items. Updike, always modest about his achievements, never attributed the press's success to any innate talent or instinct of his own, but to hard work and a desire to learn, perhaps the reason that I survived, in spite of mistakes, was that a simple idea had got hold of me to make work better for its purpose than was commonly thought worthwhile. According to Updike's own bibliography of the press's work, the following typefaces comprised the majority of work produced by Mary Mount. Notably, Updike was the first in America to acquire the now Universal Times New Roman, its first major appearance was the December 1941 issue of Woman's Home Companion, which was set by Mary Mount. That same year, Updike used Times to print his last publication, some aspects of printing old and new. Over its 56-year history, Marymount Press produced a significant volume of ephemera, especially for local businesses and organizations. Advertisements, dinner invitations, letterhead and the like were Marymount's bread and butter, keeping the press in operation. What made up Dyke New England's most distinguished printer, however, were the beautiful, finely printed books produced by Marymount Press. Below is a sampling of what many consider to be the press's most noteworthy works. Marymount's first major work was the altar book begun in 1893 and completed in 1896 financed by Harold Brown. Updike attributed the establishment of Marymount Press to the commission of the altar book saying, had I not had this definite work to do I should not have had the courage to leave my current position. The altar book was set in the press's proprietary Marymount typeface, which was designed by Bertram Grosvenor Goodhue in 1895 and based on William Morris's arts and crafts style or what Updike later called Morris's unduly black types. After completing the altar book, Updike quickly abandoned this heavy style in favor of a cleaner, more practical look and reserved use of the Marymount typeface for large pages as in the altar book. While the altar book was being prepared, Updike worked on other titles. The first of these was Vexilla Regis Quiddity, completed in 1893. The book was a selection of prayers and hymns for every day of the year compiled by Lucy Bradley Stone. Because Marymount had not yet acquired much type, the book was actually printed by Riverside Press, although Updike did arrange the book. The Humanists Library, edited by Louis Einstein, was issued in two series and was printed in the press's proprietary Montalegro type designed by Herbert Horn. The first series was printed between 1906 and 1908, the second from 1912 to 1914. Each consisted of four titles. In 1928, the Episcopal Church decided to issue a revision of its Book of Common Prayer to be financed by J.P. Morgan, Jr., whose father had funded the previous revision in 1892. Morgan solicited designs from several printing houses, including the Oxford and Cambridge University Presses, William Edwin Rudge, and Marymount Press. Updike provided two designs for the prayer book, one in Lutetia typeface and one in Janssen, the Dutch Janssen was ultimately chosen for what would become known as Marymount's finest work. 500 copies were issued in November, 1930, and a year later the book was named one of the American Institute of Graphic Arts 50 Books of the Year. Updike's friendship with Edith Wharton led to a long and successful relationship between Marymount Press and Wharton's publisher, Scribner's. 
When Wharton published her first book in 1899, The Greater Inclination, she insisted that Mary Mount be the printer. Mary Mount would print many more of Wharton's books and other titles published by Scribner's. The association was a fruitful one and vital to Mary Mount's success in its early years according to Updike, nothing could have helped the press more, just then, than the Scribner connection, for it showed we were not amateurs but could hold our own with larger printing houses, in 1915. After visiting the front of World War I, Wharton began collaborating with Updike to plan a collection of original stories, essays, poems, artworks, and musical scores, the profits from which would benefit the war effort. The book was published in 1916 alongside a special limited edition run of 175 copies, each signed by Updike. Between 1930 and 1942, Mary Mount Press published eight books for the Limited Editions Club, a publisher of fine bindings. The Limited Editions Club issued just 1,500 copies per title and was available only to subscribing members. Mary Mount also printed the Limited Editions Club's first prospectus, issued as a hardcover book. Updike was joined by a number of artists over the years who contributed to Mary Mount's distinctive look. While employed with the architectural firm Cram and Wentworth, Bertram Goodhue designed the cover, borders, initials, and typeface for Mary Mount's Altar Book, one of Mary Mount's best known publications. He continued to dabble in typography and book design but history would know him primarily as an architect. T.M. Cleland ran his own press, the Cornhill Press in Boston, until 1902 when he returned to New York, where he had begun his career as a freelance artist at age 15. During his time in Boston, he accepted a number of commissions from Updike, who mentored him in his early years. Among his designs for Mary Mount are the cover and title page for the poems of Dante Gabriel Rossetti in 1903, title page for the life of Benvenuto Cellini in 1906, and many more small projects. After leaving Boston Cleland spent a year, from 1907 to 1908, as art director for McClure's magazine and was later art director for Fortune. He would go on to become known for much of his commercial art. His clients included the American Piano Company, the Cadillac Motor Company, Grolier Club, and the Metropolitan Museum of Art. In 1906, W.A. Dwiggins began working for Mary Mount Press on commission. A graphic artist who had studied under Frederick W. Gowdy at the Frank Holm School of Illustration in Chicago, he joined Updike at a time when he was still growing as an artist. As Updike was exacting in his expectations, much of what Dwiggins submitted had to be redone or was rejected outright, but he soon became the preferred artist at Marymount Press. Most of what Dwiggins contributed was completed between 1907 and 1912, including lettering, ornaments, borders, title pages, binding designs, end papers, and illustrations. Some of his more notable work can be found in the Humanists Library series. Rudolf Ruzicka was a Czech artist known for his wood engravings, illustrations, and typefaces. Among the titles designed and printed for the Limited Editions Club by Mary Mount Press is the Fables of Jean de La Fontaine, which include decorations engraved on copper by Rudolf Ruzicka. Ruzicka provided a number of illustrations for Mary Mount Press over the years including contributing to Edith Wharton's book of the homeless and illustrating a book commemorating the 50th anniversary of Vassar College. According to Updike himself, 
Ruzicka's best-known works were the engravings he did for the press's annual Keepsakes series, beginning in 1912. The Boston Athenaeum maintains an extensive collection of material designed, printed, and generated by Marymount Press, including job tickets, specimens of type, artwork, and correspondence. The Huntington Library holds the business papers of the Marymount Press and the papers of Daniel Berkeley Updike, including correspondence with authors and publishers, and bills and estimates for clients. The Daniel Berkeley Updike Collection on the History of Printing at the Providence Public Library in Rhode Island contains Updike's personal collection of books on printing, as well as ephemera from the Marymount Press including a set of punches and two sets of matrices for Marymount's proprietary types, Montalegro and Marymount. Updike's personal correspondence, as well as books produced by Marymount Press, also comprise the collection. Lettre Batarde acquired 1901, Lettre de Somme acquired 1901, Pica English Black acquired 1898, Janssen and Janssen Italic acquired 1903, Caslin and Caslin Italic acquired 1896, Mountjoy and Mountjoy Italic acquired 1903, Oxford and Oxford Italic acquired 1906, Scotch Face and Scotch Face Italic acquired 1897, French Old Style and French Script acquired 1901. Bodoni and Bodoni Italic acquired 1930, Polyphilus and Blotto acquired 1925, Lutetia and Lutetia Italic acquired 1927, Montalegro acquired 1904, Marymount acquired 1894. Thoughts on Art and Life by Leonardo da Vinci, translated by Maurice Baring edited by Louis Einstein, Against War by Erasmus, edited by J.W. McHale, Petrarch and the Ancient World by Pierre de Noluc, The Defense of Poesy, A Letter to Q. Elizabeth and A Defense of Leicester by Sir Philip Sidney, edited by G.E. Woodbury, The Correspondence of Philip Sidney and Hubert Langwood edited by William Aspinwall Bradley, Records of Journeys to Venice and the Low Countries by Albrecht Dürer, edited by Roger Fry, A Platonic Discourse Upon Love by Pico della Mirandola, edited by Edmund G. Gardner, A Renaissance Courtesy Book, Galatio of Manners and Behaviors by Giovanni della Casa, Introduction by J.E. Spingarn. 1930 the Fables of Jean de La Fontaine, 1932, The Jaunts and Jollities of Mr. John Horrocks by R.S. Surtees, 1933, The Brothers Karamazov by Fyodor Dostoevsky, 1934, A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, 1936, Walden, or, Life in the Woods by Henry David Thoreau, 1940, Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, 1941, The Flowering of New England by Van Wyck Brooks, 1942, The Education of Henry Adams, 